Uh, we'll start standing. So you can just start anywhere on the middle of the mat, that's fine. Um, start with your feet about hip width apart and interlace your shoulders at your back, interlace your fingers at your back. Keep your elbows bent, so we'll start a little bit more gentle since we're just getting going. And you can kind of just let your hands rest sort of in that space at your lower back. Um, and then you can gently ease the shoulders and elbows back and kind of lift up through your chest. So try to avoid making this a big movement and think of it more as kind of like a, a gentle sort of stretch. Feel what it's like in your chest and shoulders. So you can lift up a little bit through your spine and then gently lift your heels just to balance on your toes. And then let the heels come down. Let go with your hands. You can bend the knees and sit back to an imaginary chair and interlace the fingers in front with elbows wide. And then turn and push your hands forward, letting your head come forward. Your tailbone will tip under and push your upper back back. So you're kind of rounding, stretching through the back of the shoulder blades. Take the hands and the head up as you take your legs straight. Just pause here, lift up through your heels and stretch up through the palms and hands a little bit more. Let the heels come down and let go with the hands out to the sides. Try to keep the wrists flexed, so fingers up to the ceiling as you bring the hands down. It'll help you stretch through your arms a bit more. And you can keep pulling the arms all the way down, coming back to your sides. Interlace the fingers at the back again, different index finger on top. And again, just let your hands kind of rest in that spot in your lower back. Again, you can gently pull elbows and shoulders back. Lift up a little bit through your chest and your spine. So you might take a breath in, kind of inflating your chest. And then as you exhale, soften a little bit. So let the intensity go away. So you can kind of settle into the gentle stretch. You can lift your heels again to balance on your toes. And then relax the heels down. Let go with your hands. Lift your heels again. Keep your heels lifted if that's comfortable and bend your knees as you sit back to an imaginary chair. Interlace the fingers in front elbows wide. Try to have a different index finger on top when you interlace your fingers. Push the hands and the head forward, letting the tailbone tip under. So rounding the back as you push the upper back back. Take the hands and the head up as the legs go straight. Your heels might still be lifted. Lift up a little bit more, stretch a little taller. Then let the heels come down. This time as you let go, let the left hand go forward and right arm go back. Try to keep the hands flexed. So fingers up to the ceiling as you pull the hands down. It's a little bit of a twist as you pull the arms down. Tightening the armpits will make that more intense. Again, interlace the fingers at the back, switch your index finger on top. Again, arms bent, gently pulling elbows and shoulders back, lifting up through the chest. Lift your heels again to balance on the toes. Keep the heels a little bit low, that'll make it easier to balance. Keep the heels lifted, gently let go with the hands, interlace the fingers in front, elbows wide. Bend the knees as you sit back to that imaginary chair. Heels still lifted. Push the hands and the head forward, tailbone tips under, rounding the back to stretch forward. Hands and head go up towards the ceiling. Heels are still lifted. Stretch a little bit taller and then let the heels come down. As you let go, right arm goes forward, left arm goes back. Hands are flexed. So fingers up to the ceiling, pull the armpits down as you pull the hands back down. And then give your shoulders a circles, a few circles forward and back, just warming them up a little bit. And then come up towards the front of the mat. Take a breath in as you take the arms up and overhead and breathe out as you take the arms wide. Bend the knees as you go forward and relax through your upper back. Keep the knees bent and you can lift up halfway, stretch it. Fold back down and step the left foot back to a lunge. And then step back into down dog. You can either bring the knee down to the floor to step back or just step straight there. So we've kind of gone right into it. From down dog, bring the knees to the floor and bring the shoulders forward. 
and then come all the way down to your belly. You can stretch the arms all the way out front and come up onto your fingertips. Press down into the fingertips, tighten the armpits as you lift your chest. Coming back down, bring your hands back alongside you, tuck the toes under, but press up just to your hands and knees and take your hips back towards your heels. So child's pose, extend it out, big stretch through the spine and the chest. Let the tailbone tip up towards the ceiling. Relax your head down. And then ease your way back up into down dog. And when you get to down dog, wiggle and move a little bit. Walk through the feet, spread out through the fingers, maybe tip the hips side to side. And then take small steps and walk your way forward back up towards the front of the mat again. You can bend the knees, lower your hips, and roll your way up to a stand. As you come up, rolling the shoulders back, arms circle out and overhead and bring the hands down in front. Relax your hands at your sides. Take a breath in as you take the arms up. Breathe out and just sit back to an imaginary chair, so not folding forward. So again, bending the knees, taking the hips back. Just pause here, relax your shoulders a little bit. If this is too much for the arms, you can bring hands to the hips. So just keep an easy breath here. If you can, imagine trying to squeeze your calf muscles. You can kind of think about being active through your feet. That'll help if that's possible. And then you can bring the palms together down to the middle, to the floor, and you can let the hips lift up. So you go into a forward fold, relaxing your head down. Let the knees bend so you can lift up halfway and stretch forward. And then fold back down and step the left foot back to a lunge and then step back into down dog, however you'd like to get there. Spreading out through the hands, give the head a little shake, wiggle through the feet. And then lift up your heels and round your back as you come forward into plank. You can bring the knees to the floor if you want to, or you can lower through that press up coming all the way down to your belly. Again, stretch the arms all the way out in front, up onto your fingertips and press down into the fingers, tightening the armpits as you lift your chest. Come back down and bring your hands back alongside you. Tuck the toes under, press up to hands and knees, and then press your way back into down dog. And again, just take a moment in down dog to wiggle and move. You can tip the hips side to side. You can lift the leg up in the air. Lift an arm up in the air, bend both arms, bend the knees, so just move around a little bit. And then walk, step, or jump back up towards the front of the mat, back to that forward fold. Bending the knees, start to lower your hips and roll your way back up to a stand. As you come up, roll the shoulders back. These arms can circle out and overhead and bring the hands down in front. Bring your hands to your hips and step your right foot back to a lunge. The back heel is lifted, you're just on your toes. Reach the right arm up to the ceiling and tip over towards the left side, pushing the back thigh up a little bit towards the ceiling. Come back to the middle, bringing your right elbow down and push the right hand across your body to that left side. So you're twisting a little bit towards the left. Come back to the middle. You can bring your hand to your hip and then reach both hands down to the floor. So you're into a lunge. Walk your hands around to the right side, taking your feet to parallel. Bend the right knee, shifting your hands and hips to the right. Try to keep the feet flat for this first one. Go up through the middle and over to the left. Just go once more back to your right. And then walk your hands back around towards the front of the mat. So you're back to a lunge with the left leg in front. So make sure back heels lifted and your hips are turned around and hands are back at the front of the mat. 
Take the left hand onto your left hip and start to lift your left hip up. Use your left hand to push your left hip and buttock back a little. So you'll feel your hips kind of um, twist a little towards the right side. And at the same time as you're pushing with that left hand, push down with the left big toe. So it's like the left toe is moving away from the left hand. You're kind of pulling your foot and your hip apart. And that'll turn your chest a little to the left, should give you a big stretch in that left leg. And you can bend that front knee, bringing the left hand back to the floor, and bring the back knee down to the floor. Bring both hands inside that left leg, and wiggle the foot out to the left a little bit, left foot, a little out to the left and forward. So you've got a bit more room. So you can move the hands forward and start to bring the hips and groin down and towards the floor. Push into the left foot, so it's like pushing down into the floor. You can bend the elbow, then lower your chest down if you need a deeper stretch. The more active you are in that left leg and left foot, the better the stretch, safer for your hip. Start to lift your chest up, you can move your hips back a little so you've got some room. And you can wiggle that left foot back towards the middle of the mat, coming back to a lunge with hands either side of the front leg and lifting up that back knee. So you're back to a normal lunge. Press your hands into the floor and step back into down dog. Spread out through the fingers. You can either stay in down dog or just briefly lift the left leg up in the air. You can bend your left knee and lift the left kneecap up towards the ceiling. You can even squeeze the left calf towards the back of the left thigh. So basically bend the knee and just kind of squeeze it in a bent position. And then bring that left foot back to the floor if you've lifted it. And lift your heels as you round your way forward into plank. And then make your way down to the floor however it's comfortable. Feel free to move your hands if you like or leave them where they are, your choice. Squeeze the legs a little bit and press into the hands as you lift your chest. And then coming back down, make your way back into down dog, however you'd like to get there. When you're ready, walk, step, or jump back up towards the front of the mat, towards that forward fold. Start to bend the knee, lower your hips, and roll your way up to a stand. When you come up, roll the shoulders back and the arms can circle out to the sides and overhead as you bring the hands down in front. Bring your hands to your hips and step the left foot back to a lunge. So back heels lifted, you're just on those toes, chest is up. Reach the left arm up to the ceiling. Push your left back thigh up, and then tip the left hand a little towards that right side. Maybe push the back thigh a little bit more, stretch through the left side of the body. Bring your left hand back, and bend your elbow as you bring your left arm down. And then push the left hand across your body to the right side. So you're twisting your upper body a little to the right. So you can press out through that palm, trying to stretch the left side of the body. Come back to the middle, bringing the hand to the hip, and then bring both hands down to the floor. Walk your hands around to the left side, taking your feet with you so they're parallel. Bend the left knee, moving hands and hips to the left, and feel free to adjust the feet. So you keep them flat, or you can lift up your heels and toes if you're deeper into the lunge on the side. Come up through the middle, move over to the right. Again, your choice how you move with your feet. Up through the middle, last time as we go to the left. And then go back up through the middle and walk the hands back around towards the front of the mat. Swiveling on the feet, so you end up with that right leg in front, that heel's lifted. Make sure hands and hips come all the way back around. Take your right hand onto your right hip and lift the hip up a little bit. So front legs come a little bit straight. Use the right hand so you can hook your thumb into the hip crease. Use that right hand to push your right hip and buttock back a little bit. And you'll find that it kind of swings your hips to the left. At the same time, push down through the front foot. 
So you want to be using quite a lot of muscle action in that right leg to push down through the foot in the opposite direction that your hand is pushing your hips. So your hip, hip right hips moving away from the foot as your body, sort of upper body twists a little bit to the right. So it's giving you a big stretch in the back of that front leg. Unwind that twist, bringing the hand down to the floor, and then bring the back knee down to the floor. Both hands inside that right leg, and you can move the right foot forward and out to the side a little bit. So you just got a bit more space. You can bring the hands to the floor and start to bring the hips and the groins forward and down. And as you do that, push down into the front right foot. So if you need a bigger stretch here, you can bend the elbow. But again, the more you push down through the right foot, the more you'll feel the stretch in the right thigh. And you can try sort of pushing, relaxing, and pushing even more. See what that feels like in that right foot. And then relax as you start to move your hips back, moving your hands back a little bit. Wiggle that right foot back towards where it was. So hands can go back to either side of that front leg and lift up the back knee, go back to a lunge. And then make your way back into down dog. When you're in down dog, you can stay here. Or if you want to, lift the right leg up, bending the right knee. You can lift that kneecap up towards the ceiling and then squeeze the calf to the back of the thigh. Just kind of like you bend your knee and then you squeeze it more. And then bring that right foot back down towards the floor. So you're back into down dog. Spreading out through the fingers, give the head a little shake so the neck is relaxed. And then lift up the heels as you round your back, come forward into lunge. Coming down all the way to your belly, however you'd like. Feel free to move the hands around. Press down into the hands as you squeeze the legs and twist the chest. And then come all the way back down and stay here. Bring the left forearm or elbow underneath your forehead and reach back with the right hand, bending the right knee and grab hold with your right hand, grabbing the right foot, ankle, trousers, whatever you can reach on that right leg. Try to be a little bit active with the muscles in the right thigh. So you can squeeze the buttocks, you can push the right thigh down, you can stretch the right knee towards the back of the mat. You could push the foot, right foot back into the hand. A couple different options to use some muscles to intensify the stretch. And then if you are squeezing any muscles in that right leg or hips or buttocks, relax and then let go. And then we'll swap over. So right forearm or elbow underneath your head, reach back with that left arm, bending the left knee, and grab foot, ankle, heel, whatever you can reach. Get active in that left leg, so squeezing the left thigh, maybe squeezing the buttocks, maybe pushing the knee down, stretching the knee back, pushing the foot into the hand, a couple different options. If you're squeezing muscles in that left leg, relax. Stop squeezing the buttocks. Slowly let go and slide your hands back alongside your chest, by the side of your ribcage. Sucking your toes under, press your way back into down dog. Last down dog, maybe just take a moment here and move if you want to. You might find it comfortable to bend the knees and take the tailbone up and down. You can tip the hips side to side or move any other way that feels good. And then bring the knees down to the floor. Have a seat off to the side and swing the legs around to the front. Take the right leg down the length of the mat, so from a seated position and bend the left knee, taking the left foot to the floor. Take the left hand behind you, and the right hand can grab the knee or shin, or the elbow can wrap around it to help you twist towards that left side. Take a little breath in, kind of 
kind of inflating your belly. You might feel it push up against your leg. And then as you exhale, relax a little bit. So soften the effort, but see if you can kind of just subtly move into the twist a little bit deeper, but without forcing it. So as you exhale, it's like your body sort of relax and slides back further towards the left. then gently relax. Unwind back around to the front, taking the left leg down the mat and bend the right knee, right foot to the floor. Take the right hand behind you, left hand can grab the knee or the elbow to wrap around the knee to help you twist back towards the right. Once you're comfortable again, take a breath into your belly, feeling it kind of push against your thigh. So it's going to feel more intentional than just a relaxed breath. And then really let the exhale be kind of slow, soft. And as you exhale, sort of relax the effort in the upper body. So just don't work quite so hard with your arms. And just see if you can let the posture go a little bit so that you twist gently back to the right a bit more. You can do that a couple times. So inhaling, kind of pressing out through the belly, Exhaling, relaxing and softening a little bit, letting your body just kind of slide a little bit towards the twist. And then relax, gently unwind, come back around to face the front. Come to a cross leg position. We'll go with the right leg in front. So, if this isn't comfortable for you to sit in a cross-legged position, you can come down to lying on your back and cross the right ankle onto the left knee or thigh and either push the right knee away or use your hands to grab hold of the left knee or thigh. So you're getting that stretch in the right hip or buttock. If it is okay to sit in a cross-legged position on the floor, you'll have the right leg in front. If it's quite full on, just sit there however it's comfortable. If it's not too intense, then flex the feet so the toes are kind of pointing forward and then wiggle the feet a little bit further in the cross. So the right foot moves more to the left and the left foot moves a little bit more to the right. So you feel like the cross is kind of more at your shins and you can move the feet forward away from you a little. Then hands can start at the side for everyone who's seated and you can start to tip forward. So you should get a stretch in one or both hips or buttocks. I also get it in your inner thighs. So again, if cross leg position is not good, just lie down on your back, cross the right ankle onto that left knee or thigh, and either push the right knee away or use your hands to grab the left thigh or the left shin. If you're seated with the legs crossed and tipping forward and you don't have spinal injuries, relax your head a little bit. So you can let the chin kind of come towards the chest. It doesn't go all the way down, just a little. And then as you breathe in, round your back a little bit. So you'll feel your belly kind of pull away from your thighs. And then you might tip forward a little more. It might intensify the stretch in the legs and across the back. It's not good for the spine to go back to that nice neutral position. It's a nice long spine. And then if you're leaning forward, lengthen out through the spine and then start to come back up. And we'll change to the other side. So if you're seated, change the cross of the legs, to the left leg in front. If you're lying down, swap over so left ankle is onto right thigh. So again, in that seated position, move the feet forward away from you a little bit and then cross them further over each other. And then if you can, try to flex them. So you're right on the rim or the outside edge of that foot. And then with hands on the side, start to tip forward. If it's easy to be here, then you can bring the hands in front. But that can be quite intense, might be too far to reach. And again, if that's not comfortable lying on your back, crossing the left ankle onto the right knee or thigh and either pushing left knee away or using both hands to grab the left shin or the right shin or thigh as you pull it towards you. If 
If you're seated and tipping forward and don't have spinal injuries, relax the head down a little bit so chin comes towards the chest. As you breathe in, rounding the back a little bit. So belly moves away from the thighs. Your chin kind of might drop down more. And you might lean your whole upper body forward more. Potentially intensifying the stretch in the back and hips. But if it's not okay for the spine, then go back to that neutral position. And then if you're leaning forward, nice long spine, stretching up, coming all the way up to seated. If you're lying down, stay there, but just uncross the leg. For everybody, we'll make sure we come down to lying on our back. So if you need to, wiggle forward a little bit so that you can get your head on the mat when you lie down. Just come down to lying on your back. Bring your knees in towards your chest and give them a little bit of a hug, just to think side to side. And then with one hand on either knee or shin, pull the knees wide apart and towards your armpits a little bit. And then let the knees move away from you, kind of pulling, your knees will pull on your hand. You can let the tailbone tip down, lower back will arch. Again, pull the knees towards your armpits, lower back will round. Let the knees move away, tailbone tips down, lower back arches. And one more time, pulling knees towards you. And then gently relax as you let the knees come back together. Take hands onto the left knee, stretch the right leg down the length of the mat. As you pull the left knee in, you can lift the head off the floor, give a little hug, and push down with the right leg into the floor. Relax as you let your head come back down and swap the legs over, so bring the right knee in, take the left leg down the length of the mat. Give the right knee a little hug as you lift your head off the floor and push down through the left leg. And then gently relax, letting go, letting the foot, right foot come to the floor and start to find a comfortable position for Shavasana. So either legs down the length of the mat or knees bent, feet on the floor, arms can be wherever it's comfortable. If you haven't yet, go ahead and close your eyes. Take a slow breath in, and as you breathe in, soften through your face. Relax your jaw, your cheeks. As you exhale, relax through your back and your belly. Let the breathing slow down. And bring your focus or your awareness to the sensations of the movement of your belly as you breathe.
Maybe take a deeper breath in. Feel a bit more movement in your belly and your chest. As you exhale, maybe stretch the arms overhead, stretch down through the legs, big stretch, fingers to toes. And then as you relax, maybe bending the knees and just rolling to your side. And then just slowly pressing your way up to a seated position. As you breathe in, lift up a little through your spine. As you breathe out, lean forward. Maybe your hands reach onto the floor in front of you. Relaxing your head and your back. Let your eyes open and slowly make your way back up. Kia ora guys. Thanks for coming to the last Friday morning class.